In the last video, we saw how to use rate limiting within a Spring Cloud Gateway application. In this video, we are going to finish off the series by closing off with the load shedding in Spring Boot. So before implementing the load shedding within the Spring Boot application, let's briefly discuss what is load shedding. Imagine that we have multiple instances of an application. We are getting multiple calls. And in terms of rate limiting, we do limit our number of requests for individual APIs. But in the load shedding, we want to safeguard our individual service so that it doesn't exceed a particular threshold. So load shedding is basically limiting the calls per service. Per service is nothing but the per instance. You can be auto scaling your instances to multiple instances, but within an instance, if let's say there is a threshold and if it tries to exceed that particular threshold, we want to safeguard that particular instance or the service. So load shedding is used for that particular purpose. So imagine an app. Uh, we can have multiple parameters to safeguard our services using load shedding. For example, we can have CPU utilization to identify if we want to load shed or we can have concurrent in-flight request or resource isolation. Like I said, CPU utilization is used by Google. Concurrent in-flight request is used by Facebook. Resource isolation is used by AWS in AWS Lambda. These are different load sharing techniques which people use. And if let's say a particular resource threshold is reached, the APIs will be responding with 503 service unavailable. So the consumer will know that, okay, the service has been like getting too many requests and we should retry them after a while. So 503 denotes that the service is currently unavailable, but then you can retry them later. That's the whole purpose of this HTTP error code. In terms of rate limiting, you would have seen that we return a 429 too many requests, but for load shedding, we want to make sure that particular service is returning 503, right? Even the load balancer can read the 503 and then route the traffic to a different instance. So consider this case where we have multiple instances of the application. If one of the application is returning 503, subsequent calls to the services will be routed to a different instance than to that instance. That's how the load balancer behaves, right? The load balancer can trigger your keep alive. And if the keep alive is returning 503, then we can route the traffic to a different instance, which is there to serve. So now how do we do this in Spring Boot, right? So we are going to create a load shedding application. We are going to expose an endpoint called greetings and we are going to use the in-flight request. So we are going to restrict our application if the requests are more than three. I want to just simulate a simple scenario. Generally, Tomcat has 200 threads, which is the default thread count. I don't want to like go to that many number of threads, um, right? So I want to create a simple example. So if let's say there are four requests coming in to the greetings endpoint, the fourth request should be returned with 503, right? And the third and the first three requests should be processing, right? Uh, since it's a simple greetings application, I will just make it uh, sleep for let's say a minute or two. That way we can simulate the fourth request and then see how the uh, server is responding, right? And I'll show you how to do that. With that, let's get started. So I'm going to the start.spring.io. Here I have selected the languages Java, Maven, 2.7.6 version of Spring Boot, which is the latest for 2.7. I've uh, changed the group to Comtech Primers. I have changed the artifact name to Load Shedding Example, um, package name to Load Shedding. I'm using the JAR packaging and the Java version 11. I also added a Spring MVC dependency because we wanted to expose one endpoint called Greetings. That's all. So I'm going to generate this project and then open it in IntelliJ. So the project is open in IntelliJ, so I can see the POM XML. So in the POM, I think I have only one dependency, right? The Spring MVC. There is nothing, it's just a vanilla project, right? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new filter. So in this case, we want to track the number of requests, isn't it? So the number of requests can be tracked by counting the number of incoming requests, right? So how do I count the incoming request? There is a Spring filter or the servlet filter using which we can plug in or add a new class, right? And then we can start counting the number of requests and then we can start decreasing it when the uh, chain completes, right? So Spring Boot has a filter chain. So I'm going to leverage that. So I'm going to create a new uh, in-flight request filter. Usually this filter, uh, these filters implement the filter from the servlet right the java x servlet that's the interface i'm going to implement the do filter method right so in the do filter method i'm going to like uh, so it, it has three arguments right 
ಈ ಫಿಲ್ಟರ್ ಚೈನ್ ಹೆಚ್ ಟಿ ಪಿ ರೆಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಅಂದ್ ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಸ್ಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಟು ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಚೈನ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಸೇ ಫಿಲ್ಟರ್ ಚೈನ್ ಡಾಟ್ do and then servlet request and the response so when will i move it to the next filter chain once i have incremented the um, request right i mean we need to count the number of requests so what i am going to do so what i'm going to do uh, first thing is i'm going to annotate this with component so that this can be injected during the startup also i'm going to provide a maximum um, so i'm just going to say private final integer max request right so i want to keep only three requests right that's the max request and i also want to count the number of requests so i'm just going to say uh current requests so the current request count is zero and the max requests are like three right so every time we get a um request i'm going to like increment right and i'm going to just wrap this guy into a try catch method because what if like subsequent uh, chains fail right and i also want to irrespective of uh, whether it succeeds or not i want to decrease my, my counter right so i can increment the counter and i can decrement the counter right also in addition to that we also need to send a 503 right if let's say the max request exceeds greater than 3 right so what we are going to do here if the max request sorry the if the concurrent request or the current request right is exceeding the maxed request right it can be like greater than so what happens if let's say the third request comes in it goes and increments and the fourth request when it comes in it this will be like already 3 right so it could be 3 so if it is equal to or greater than um, the max request then we need to send a um, response right so we need to basically return right so what are we going to return uh, we are going to return the servlet response right so i'm going to use a http servlet response we already have the object here so i'm going to type cast that object into an http type so that we can add some uh, status so you can just pass the status uh, i want to pass uh, let's say server unavailable right i want to pass the server unavailable status and also i want to pass some message right so i want to pass a message saying uh, response that get output dot right you can do a write and then you can do like a byte string so i can do a byte message um, server un available please try later or after some time so that's what we typically do right and also i want to convert this into a char set i want to do a utf8 right so this string is now converted into a byte array and then sent it as a response so that's all we are now trying to load shed the request if it is greater than 3 right so we are trying to do that uh, i am doing a current request incrementer and then i am doing a filter chain and then increment decrementing it right if you look at it this this particular variable the current request i'm using an integer this may not be like safe if i'm using multiple uh, threads right because this particular filter will be hit by multiple threads and then they can complete uh, whenever uh, they want right and then this is like not thread safe so i'm going to use the atomic integer for that so instead of using the integer let's use as atomic integer so i'll do a dot get here i have to do a increment get here i have to do a decrement so we have checked if the requests are greater than 3 right and then we are sending a response code with 503 if not we are incrementing the counter and then we are passing it to the next chain once the chain completes the request we are decrementing the counter right so that's the whole uh, flow cycle right now let's try uh, bringing this app up right let me run this application
also uh, if you notice we did not add any rest endpoint right i mean we wanted to add the greetings uh, controller let's add that so let's first run this and then we will try to change this a bit so right now i think when we send this request it will be individually like um sending hello youtube and it will be completing very quickly right so we cannot test our real scenario let me go to the uh, terminal and then do a curl so we get a hello youtube immediately right so i didn't do anything it just came immediately right because we didn't add any um sleep or anything if i do it like a number of times i'm just going to get the same thing again and again right and if i do it multiple times it's not going to uh, matter right let me open new tabs so that we can check so i have like four uh, different shells where we are going to run the same things right but meanwhile i want to add some delay uh, to this particular endpoint so i'll add a sleep of uh, let's say one minute right so just to make sure that we test the whole load shedding so i want to like simulate a real-time production scenario where let's say there are so many requests which are getting processed and then we have reached the maximum in flight uh, concurrent request right which is three in our case here so the application is up now let's try uh, running all these in the same so if you see here my requests are stuck because they are going to be stuck for a minute and this is my fourth request the fourth request should now return 503 right and see that i can get the 503 i can see the 503 is coming in right now after a minute we need to like see that these apis will be like responding and then we should be able to like get subsequent messages immediately right let's see uh, what happens so notice here uh, i think the moment uh, hello youtube started coming in this this particular curl got like stuck now i think it will wait for another three requests and then the fourth request see here now i'm getting a server and available so this is what load shedding is uh, in real time right now if i show you the diagram right so what happened here is we have an application we were having a greetings endpoint the number of requests exceeded more than three that means i have maximum concurrent flight requests which i can handle which is only three for this application and if something goes beyond three i'll be sending 503 server unavailable so that the client can now uh, flip to a different instance most of the time these are handled by the um, um, if i show you the hyphen v it shows 503 most of the time these are handled by the load balancers because load balancer if they do an actuator call right they can even get um, the request router to a different uh, instance so they know that this particular application is not alive and they can route the traffic to a different instance right um, maybe i'll if you're interested i can show that in a kubernetes cluster by deploying an application into multiple instances and then we can try that um, in in kubernetes within minikube uh, do let me know if you guys are interested to see that in kubernetes uh, we can try that as well uh, to see that Kubernetes load balancer automatically um, ignores the pod which returns 503, right? So we should be able to see that uh, the load balancer automatically takes care of that. So let me just summarize what we did here. We created a inflight request filter. Uh, using filters, we can use Spring to intercept all the requests and then do something. In our case, we wanted to count the number of request and we wanted to decrement it when the requests are completed that way we can identify the number of concurrent in-flight requests within our application or within the service or within that instance and when the number of requests increases beyond a particular threshold which is three here we will be sending 503 service unavailable so that the clients can then retry later so we just did um, the concurrent request dot get we used an atomic integer to store the uh, concurrent request. We incremented it if it is good, if the request is good. We decremented it when the uh, filter chain got completed. And we were testing it using a greeting endpoint where we added a one minute sleep so that we can test uh, in flight requests which are processing so that we can have maximum threshold reached. This is one way of using load shedding. There are multiple ways like resource isolation, CPU utilization, memory monitoring, etc. You can even monitor the memory um, and then 
decide whether you want to load shed that particular application. I just showed you one particular example real time. This is how you can create critical applications in production and how you can scale your applications and handle failures when there are too many requests coming into your application. I hope you learned something new. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.